Greetings, my magic friends. Welcome to Dave the Donkey's channel. There he is. He's a little bit inebriated, you know what I mean? So, anyway, I'm going to review not one, but two albums for you tonight, my magic friends. Yep. Both of them released in 1978. However, I am not entirely sure which was the debut. Mm, one of them was, but I don't know which. <laughs> well, <sighs> Obscure Alternatives. Jam Japan, right? Brilliant bloody album. I think that's the second one actually. Yep, it is. Hmm. And it's got like a little bonus disc, a live one kind of thing with it. And then you've got Adolescent Sex. Now I think that's the first album. Look at the way they were then, though. Japan. You know what I mean? Look at them. Look at David Sylvian. Sadly, Mick Khan, the fretless bassist, died. Mm. Not that long back, in fact. Brilliant bassist he was. He had a, a solo project. He, he's even been on one or two Gary Newman albums. The man was very talented, but he's gone. But these two albums, right? Absolutely fantastic. Brilliant. Check them out. Check these bloody albums out, because they're brilliant. I mean, you know, <clears throat> the first two albums, I think they only made five studio albums in the career. Between 78 and 83. Then they split up. Um, first two ones. Then the third one. When it was about 1980. It was like. Um, oh everyone's. They're either doing a new wave of British heavy metal. They're either doing. New romantic. Or they're either doing. Bloody ska kind of music. So the, I think they opted for New Romantic. And they pulled it off really well as well. I mean, everyone thinks, um, oh, David Sylvian, oh, he's ripping bloody Brian Ferry, Ferry off. And ev everyone says, Brian Ferry's ripping David Bowie off. And then everyone says, David Bowie's ripping bloody Perry Como off. Where, where the hell do you fucking end it? You know what I mean? Everybody, everywhere, is influenced by somebody. I mean, it stands to reason. You can't not be. I mean, everyone's got an influence running through the veins. I mean, Christ, I try and be original all the time on my bass and that, but everything... But there's always like an underlying, oh, he's classy, me, oh, I'll try and be, no, I don't try and be like anyone, I'm just like, it, it's, you know, subconsciously, subconsciously instilled in there. Anyway, getting back to the bloody story, these two albums, check them out, really bloody good albums. Check them out, my magic people. Um, yep. And brilliant they were. What? What are you whining about now? Oh, for God's sake, Davy man. Just shut up, will ya? You just spoil the whole thing. Who? Oh, P. 
Pete Waterman. Oh, I don't like Pete Waterman. See, if he heard anything like this, he would like, go, I don't know, he wouldn't be very happy because he hates anything with an ounce of talent, doesn't he, really, Pete Waterman? Hmm, stuck here at the moment, eh? Oh, hey. I, I've got a lot of um, disrespect for people like him. I mean, he, he's supposed to care about the music industry. Well, oh, he hasn't done much for it. Over the last 45 years, he's supposedly in, been involved in it. He collects steam trains for crying out loud, man. What does that tell you about him? He's a joke. Pete Waterman. I don't, well, I don't think so, because... I'll tell you what. Lemmy had a go at him once and all. Because he wanted to, um Well, Ace of Spades, he wanted to redo it. What the fuck? Hello? Um, yeah, ten minutes ago. All right. Oh, hello, Pete. How are you doing? Um, yeah. That'd be fine, thanks. Tomorrow? Hmm, <laughs> yeah. Okay. Oh, cheers for thinking of me, bud. Right, I'll see you tomorrow. Crack it on, right? See you later, mate. Cheers, bro. Hmm, <laughs> right. Ciao. Oh, God almighty. That was Pete Waterman, you know. He wants me to um, be part of his next record label. Um. Oh, my God. See you later. Shut up.